Gangbang? Yeah, I'm gonna gangbang. I'm gonna watch that. That's the highest goal. All right, thank you. All right, guys. So it seems that Annie's Tea Party versus GB5 is going to be our current uh, most desired game to watch. So I'm going to switch over to that. And spectate. All right, so let's see what's going on in this game. Now, uh, the reason that this is such a highly desired game to watch is because Annie's Tea Party, while they came in first last year uh, at this exact tournament, um, this year, this was uh, late. This was actually GB5 is actually the team that uh, made it to the finals against Annie's Tea Party. So this is a highely desired uh, game to watch. Currently, the goal difference is 13k in favor of. Uh, uh, GB5, no, in favor of uh, Annie's Tea Party. Sorry about that. Got a little switched up there for a minute. So I guess we'll uh, see how it's going. It's not too big of a difference. We got three kills on LeBlanc, which is really, really good for... Uh, that's definitely uh, going to help them a lot, just having those kills on, uh, on LeBlanc. Let's see if there's anybody that she can pick off. She can definitely pick off a uh, Lulu or a uh, Corky if they're not careful or they get out of position or anything. Um, Morgana versus uh, Brahm in the bot lane of supports. We got Lucian. So this is definitely looking like it's uh, going to be a very interesting game. I'd definitely like to see how it plays out. In the top lane here, looks like a little bit of damage uh, going back and forth. Nothing uh, too serious. Just trying to pick off some CS. Pushing in towards uh, the mid lane a little bit as uh, LeBlanc only Quinn NA. Clear. Oh, and they had a really good engage onto Lulu. Got a, n a really nice amount of damage, actually. And uh, Lulu might actually be able to pick up a kill off of that. So that was a very good play by uh, Silnetto. And now uh, he notices that Elise has no mana, and so he's going to be able to uh, do a lot of damage and possibly pick up a double kill. Very nice play by Silnetto. He uh, read the mana. He just kept a really good track of everything that was going on. That's really good. Uh, that's going to be really good to have that gold on uh, Lulu. I'm not quite sure yet if she's going to go a little bit more tanky. He is 5 for 1, actually. So he's going to be a little bit insane. That's probably why they were trying to pick him off there. See what's going on in the bot lane. It looks like they're going to heavily aggress onto the bottom turret. Possibly uh, they will take this down. There is no way that anybody from... Uh, from GB5 will be able to stop this. We do have a teleport coming from Lulu to the mid lane. It looks like they're gonna try and pressure the uh, the mid lane after hopefully killing this uh, LeBlanc here. Uh, Silnetto did notice the fake out and did indeed get faked out. LeBlanc made it to safely. Very nice play by uh, LeBlanc picking up a kill and going away. So it looks kind of like Silnetto's saying, okay, well I see that this LeBlanc has a lot of kills and I have a lot of kills, so we'll kind of face off, see how it goes. Um, they did force them to retreat. They are, uh, Brahm's currently aggressing onto Morgana, pushing her away from being able to help the tower. It looks like just as GB5 took that bottom tower with not a lot of, uh, not a lot of resistance, uh, NEC party is going to be able to take down the mid middle turret. That's going to be a very big, uh, advantage. Lucian, however, countering by pushing back the, uh, bottom tower. Corky, I'm not sure if he's trying to see if he can, uh, save that it looks like he will however Lucian's backing a little bit early probably could have gotten the tower it would have been close likely would have died um, so I, I guess it's just however you want to play it trading lives for towers I think they figure they're down so maybe not the best option at this point Jarvin goes in does pick up a kill off of Nar um, so Silnetto kind of starting to give that gold spread that gold around a little bit Lucian's coming in he knows that Jarvin is in here can they trap him in Except he has no uh, nobody at the turret anymore since an R fell. So uh, some t team members from GB5 kind of rotating up. They won't be there by the time they get there unless they uh, change their mind, decide to stick around. So playing this very well in uh, from uh, NHT party's perspective, just kind of like making making sure they're uh, going to the right places at the right times, um, pushing down this bottom tower. I just realized I said it was a GB5 pushing down the bottom tower earlier, my uh, fault on that. 
We'll have a exhaust going down on LeBlanc. Is she going to go down? She actually picks up a kill on Corky. Very good play. Doslam does uh, finish it off, though. Runs away with his shield facing the minions. Just kind of pops him in the face. And uh, looks like Doslam will get away. Very uh, good for Annie's Tea Party that they got LeBlanc down, though. Um, but like I said, that Corky can be an easy target. Uh, definitely uh, very squishy. Um, really, uh, really good ward control once again. You see that triangle formation that I was talking about with the wards that was really successful against uh, Healy's Wheelies. And they're using it again. They just kind of... Because basically what happens is even if... Even if somebody is in this little ghost zone right here, you're not going to not know that they're there. You're, you're going to know that they're there. Um, so it looks like Nars kind of switching down, back down to the uh, bottom lane. He's going to try and push that out, put a little bit of pressure. Um, now, if I had to say, I would say that GB5 really needs to work on getting some ward coverage down. They uh, only got the one in Dragon. A uh, few there, so they, so they are working on it. They do recognize it. Um, they lost that mid tower, so now they really want to make sure that they got a little bit of a vision around the mid lane, uh, just kind of a general general idea of where the enemy team is. Looks like there's a little bit of a dance around the dragon. It is going to be up in 10 seconds. You see all the teams are collapsing onto dragon. We do have a uh, pink ward inside for uh, and an engage from Jarvin. He goes in. They do pick up the kill onto Morgana. Elise comes in for Loco, possibly going down. Um, she is not able to find anything, and LeBlanc also goes down. That is a huge advantage for Annie's Tea Party. They are going to pick up this dragon. Uh, there's not anything that they're able to do about it with just a Nar and just a Lucian with a Nar at half, half health. Um, now, if uh, GB5 had maybe waited just a little bit and had gotten a chance to get Nar to get them into the dragon pit, um, probably waited that out. That would have been a really big advantage because Nar's ultimate could have knocked all of them back into walls. There's a ton of walls inside there, and they would have been able to possibly uh, bring that back a little bit. But instead, they had a really good engage from uh, Jarvin. He went straight in, and uh, they picked up the Morgana and just kind of cleaned up everything else. So now... Uh, GB5 once again just trying to recover a little bit. Some of the ward control from uh, Annie's Tea Party is dying a little bit now. We uh, see some pings going down, a little bit of ward clearing. They're kind of, uh, this is just kind of a reset moment. They're thinking, okay, what can we do? How can we pick up an advantage? And uh, that, that's really what you got to do. You just got to keep uh, trying to play for the advantages. We see Jarvin going in, gets to half health. That is very big because he is one of their biggest initiations. It looks like Annie's Tea Party's team just wasn't quite uh, quite behind him, or wasn't sure if that was a communication issue. They would have done a that would have been a very good uh, chance for Jarvin to go in um, because Lucian actually was not with the enemy team, so I'm not entirely sure what happened there exactly. Jarvin just clearing the jungle. Luba going back to the top lane, getting a little bit of solo experience and solo uh, CS and whatnot. We do see that. Uh, Lulu currently is uh, beating, let me go ahead and switch these around here. All right, so Annie's Tea Party just kind of protecting the mid lane while letting Lulu do her thing. Um, 106 to 105 CS, so actually uh, Nar is doing a very good job of keeping up in CS. Uh, Jarvin does get the engage once again. He goes in, they are going to possibly try to pick up uh, Morgana, she does not go in. Um, they do not pick up the Morgana. A lot of no, no deaths yet. Morgana finally does go down. It was a perfect uh, Oriana ult early into that. Uh, LeBlanc goes in, picks up a kill. Very low HP, at least very low HP. Running away. And uh, LeBlanc uh, did go down as well. Um, Elise, however, did make it to safety. Lucian's just trying uh, best he can to clear the uh, minions. He can't go in too far, though. There is four of them still at three quarters to a half HP. Um, not a whole lot he's going to be able to do right there. Jarvan uh, throwing down his man flag, escaping away that way. They're just going to try and push out the lanes again. NST Party is going to be like, hey, we just got a huge gold lead. It is now 30.4k to 24k. And so uh, NST Party is just going to take that win. They're going to back off. 
uh, set down that ward coverage, that, that triangle zone ward coverage again. Um, also got a lot of ward, cover ward coverage just through the middle there. So they're going to be able to see uh, if anybody tries to um, move along that route, uh, just what's going to happen there. We got some pings for the uh, bottom tower. They know that Lucian's going to take it any minute, and I don't believe that they're going to be able to stop that. Uh, Lulu would need to use her teleport, and that is still uh, only a quarter of the way through the cooldown. We did get a uh, turret after all, like I said. And it looks like most of this action is going to be in the mid lane, so that's what I'm going to mostly pay attention to. Hope you guys are uh, enjoying the stream, enjoying the tournament, enjoying the game. Make sure you are, uh, if you haven't already, um, if, and you'd like to give any kind of donation, um, all of this does go towards the uh, Children's Miracle Network for Children's Hospitals. Very, uh, this is a nationwide event. We get a stun and a followed by a snare onto Lulu Silnetto. And it looks like Jarvan is there to back him up. We have a teleport coming in from GB5. They see that. They're just going to try and get out. They start separating the team. Uh, GB5 does go in with Gnar a little bit. And uh, unfortunately for them, there's a Jarvan ultimate. And Annie's Tea Party just lands everything in a very small area that Jarvan is just crucial. Now, uh, okay, so now she doesn't really have enough health to do much. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to take the uh, Baron. They're going to have to kite it really good. They're going to have to trade off who's taking the most damage from who. Um, so Lulu is trying to keep that uh, Smite alive. And, you know, they're, they are going to be able to get it. But definitely a very good teamwork in switching off. Very, very, uh, just very precise switching off. They're all going to get out with very low HP. But you know what? The entire enemy team is dead running out to lanes, so they were perfectly safe. That was a perfectly fine call. Really good uh, teamwork coming in from them there. Just a little bit of an update, uh, Protating Gaming Baked versus De uh, De Godfather's crew. Their game currently is still paused. So we currently, uh, I haven't uh, gotten a whole lot of update as to what's going on with that. But we're uh, still watching what is a uh, definitely an exciting an exciting game of Annie's Tea Party versus GB5. Make sure to uh, update on the straw poll who you guys think is going to win if you have not already. I'm going to repost that once again in the chat. Alrighty, there's the straw poll for you who you think is going to win. Actually, you know what? That's for Protated Game, Gaming Baked versus uh, disregard that uh, last straw poll there. That's for the game that we're still waiting on. It looks like Annie's Tea Party. Nope. Are they going to walk into a trap? They just might. There's four enemies on the other side of that wall. That Corky is very visible. They might lose a Baron, but Corky gets out. They see it coming. They weren't able to lock him down for long enough. It looks like NEC Party kind of wants to re-engage. So Jarvie goes in, lays down the ult. A lot of damage. Once again, going down in a really, really uh, just, just a small area. Three of, uh, three of GB5 goes down, and NEC walks away with the win. They are going to pick up a dragon from this. Uh, so... It's kind of a rinse and repeat strategy, you know? So uh, last time they took the Baron, this time they took that. Let's uh, go ahead and look. They're just Our trying to... About to start back up again. All right, I was just informed that the uh, Protated Gaming Baked versus uh, G or versus uh, De Godfather's Crew is going to be starting up in five minutes. So in five minutes, I will be uh, switching over to that game. In the meantime, however, let's see if Annie's Tea Party can finish up game two. Will they be able to pull out? They do have a 12, if I can do my math right, 12K cold lead right there. I, uh, of course, didn't go to, go to school for math by any means. But uh, we'll see if they can pull it out. Let's see, take a look and see what the vision control is looking like. Because like I've tried to mention before, that is a very crucial part to just keeping your lead, keeping... Uh, an idea of how much, uh, how far you can push. Now, what's really nice about these pink wards is that they don't go away unless the uh, enemy is, uh, unless the enemy is killing them. So, just permanent vision, really, uh, really solid there. Let's go ahead and look like, see and look what it's like for uh, 
the blue. Um, actually, not not bad uh, vision by comparison. They're actually kind of going for the same strategy. They're uh, you'll see that Annie's Tea Party has this all warded. GB5 has this all warded, and then vice versa right here as well. So pretty uh, standard lanes. Lucian pushing out that lane. Let's go ahead and push all because everybody is MIA. They are pushing towards the top lane. Annie's Tea Party is probably gonna try to pressure the uh, top and mid lane. Well, meanwhile, Lucian bot lane is not gonna be able to get it on that wave, but he'll probably be able to get the turret on the next wave. They will likely, um, unless GB5 can put a stop to it, take this turret. They push them right off the turret. Braum just takes this huge shield from uh, Lulu, actually making his shield bigger, might I add. And uh, so they pushed them off the turret, took that. Lucian is pushing the bot, pushing in the bot lane. So we'll, uh, we, they, they start to see that they can't defend, or they can't attack against four as well as Lucian can push against nothing. Restarting now. All right, so, so I was just informed once again that they are uh, starting soon. They uh, do have minion support. Uh, Lulu did push off uh, Lucian, and Lucian goes down to Silneto on Lulu. They are uh, going to, meanwhile, bot her top lane, re possibly take the inhibitor. They do not have it yet. One hit from attack, it does go down. Uh, there's now two members. Two members went down there. The uh, I guess LeBlanc and then Nar a little bit earlier. Nar is back up now. They're going to kind of, once again, just take this advantage. They see that they won. They're up 15k gold, so they're just going to back off. Um, definitely uh, the smart decision. You don't want to make any throws. Throws in late game uh, can definitely can definitely make things uh, a bad day for you. So we don't want to do any of that. So they go back, they buy, they heal. Um, let's go ahead and look at the uh, gold difference between uh, a lot of the champions. So Corky is sitting on 11k gold. Lulu is sitting on 10k gold. That is 9-1 and 7-1 and and scores comparatively to their uh, counterparts at 7,200 and 7,000. That is a major difference. I don't know if GB5 is going to be able to uh, pull this out, but they're certainly going to try. So See how it goes. They're finally pushing in. Kind of looks like it's going for the final... Uh, push. Now it does look like Protato Gaming Baked is uh, getting started back up. I think we uh, know the result of what this game is going to be. So let's go ahead and I'm going to switch back over for you and we'll see how uh, how this game for Protato Gaming Baked versus the Godfather's Crew uh, plays out for us. Over